Hey everyone, welcome back to Observe and episode 3 of the Mind Palace. If you remember in the last video of the series, I said that in this video I would be going over how to add information to your Mind Palace. Yeah, I mean that, that's what we're doing, let's go! Well, I hope that everybody's having a good year so far. I'm glad that you're here. Now, if you've been keeping up with this series, then you know that in order for the stuff in this series to work correctly, you also have to have taken into account and utilized the techniques used in the first two videos. Now, with, uh, with that being said, um, with that being said, since you obviously already have your entire Mind Palace memorized, perfectly, the reason that this specific memory technique works is because you've already done something very, very similar to that, probably without even noticing. Picture this. How many of you have have come home from something, whether it's work or errands or something like that, and you come home and you put your various items away, whether it's your shoes, your coat, your keys, etc., into their proper places. For instance, you put your coat on a an hanger and put it into the coat closet or on a coat rack or something like that, and you put your shoes onto the shoe rack or onto the mat or just by the door or wherever you put those, and you put your keys onto the hook or into the basket or on the table or wherever you put those, and you go about your day. Now later on, you actually end up having to go back out into the great world. You can go back through your house and find those items fairly easily. You know where your coat is in your coat closet or hook or wherever, and you know where your shoes are, and you know where your keys are, and you're able to go about your day just fine after locating those items. Well, that is exactly how a mind palace actually works. You see, the only difference in these two examples is that the mind palace itself is in your mind. The house that you have to walk through is from your memory. That's why memorizing your palace layout is entirely crucial in order for this to work. And if you don't have your, your palace layout memorized, then the entire technique is going to fall apart and remain just beyond your grasp. Now obviously the items that you will be placing throughout your mind palace won't be just the normal everyday items like I just listed every single time. It might be one or two times but it will vary and that brings us to adding information to your mind palace. Okay, so the very first step that you need to take and is very, very often overlooked in the videos, tutorials, and books is that you need to categorize the information that you have into a numerical list. And this can be done for everything. It genuinely can be done for everything. Say, obviously, if it's a grocery list, then that won't be a very big issue for you. You could just be, all right, so I'm just going to put numbers next to the groceries. If it's a shopping list, same thing. But once you get into the realm of something maybe like a speech, then you actually start having some difficulty and you actually have to think outside the box a little bit. So what you would do is you'd go into each paragraph or something like that and you'd outline bullet point outline your speech into subject matters, each of those having a noun as the subject. And the reason that you need a noun, a specific object, an item, is because you need to visually be able to create that numerical list in your head with items tagged to each one that will remind you as to what that speech is about. So say you're giving a speech on something uh, a pretty, pretty visual already. Say you're giving a speech on different types of paintbrushes that you could or couldn't buy. Now, you can go through and you'd imagine, for instance, the first one is a fan brush. So you could picture a fan as the actual subject of that paragraph, and that would be the, the object of that bullet point. And you'd picture a fan. It could be an old fan, it could be a rotating fan, it could be any kind of fan, but the fan that you picture will be the thing that cues your memory into remembering that that paragraph is about a fan brush. Now, this gets a little bit more difficult when it moves into the metaphysical, to something like, for instance, an emotion like love. Love is something that you can't see, so it's hard to come up with an idea or an object that can actually symbolize love. So what you could do, for instance, is picture, well, a very shiny, glittery red heart that's floating in a cloud of pink smoke. Try to make it as visually stimulating as you possibly can, and this is actually very, very important. The visual stimulation 
is key. Try to make your object as visually stimulating as possible. Movement, colors, textures, etc. All of these are enormous in this memory technique. Now once you have created your list, your bullet point list full of visual objects that tie into each numerical point, you can start plugging it in to your mind palace. Now, if you remember in the last video, and if you followed what I told you in the last video, I told you to go through your mind palace, pick out a, a single route that you will always, always walk, and each object needs to be numbered one through however many that you go through. And now, this is where it gets simple. You take number one on your list and you plug it to number one in your mind palace, and so on and so forth. Now, say for instance, you have something like well, shoes on your list. And shoes on your list is number four, but number four in your mind palace is like your computer desk. However, number eight in your mind palace is a map by the door, so you think to yourself, well, why don't I just put the shoes onto the map by the door and that'll make it more logically sound in my mind. And while this sounds like a good idea, it will actually wreck the uniformity of what the mind palace is supposed to be. Because if you remember, your brain loves repetition. And if you don't feed repetition to it, then this technique isn't going to work for you. So regardless of the number on your list, if it doesn't make any sense in the area in your mind palace of the according number, it does not matter. They have to line up. So if number four is shoes and number four is a computer desk, then that's just how it has to be. And you can picture dirty, grimy, muddy shoes sitting on your computer desk and getting everything all dirty, but the shoes are there and you can see them and maybe they're moving by themselves and whatnot. Try to add as much visual stimulation as possible because your brain remembers visually far better than just words. And I've gone over this in multiple videos in the past, and that's what this technique hinges on, is that visualization of the list according to your mind palace. Now you go through your list and you plug it all into your mind palace, and then that makes it to where you walk through your mind palace when you get to number four on your list, or when you get to your computer desk, which is number four, you can see well, the shoes that you put there earlier. Now, that is actually how you add information to your mind palace. And you continue to rehearse that route. You continue to rehearse those items in those orders. And then you plug in the items from your list that you've made into those. And it all comes second nature. And you're able to virtually walk through your mind palace and see the items that are in there. And that, that wraps up today's video. If you have any questions about what we covered today or in the past couple episodes, go ahead and post them below. And then next episode of this, which will be the finale of the Mind Palace series that I've done here, I will answer those questions to the best of my abilities, give you any pointers and tips that you might be looking for. And then also there's a little something at the end that's kind of as a bonus. So if you want to find out what that is, you'll have to stay tuned to the next video. Uh, but with that in mind, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see the rest of this series and maybe some more videos similar to this one, hit subscribe, maybe turn on the bell and you could see it as soon as it uploads. It's usually going to be on the weekends, somewhere in the middle of the day. But without further ado, that is all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as always. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. This time could just go slow. Will truly take my heart. It's only time apart. And in no time, we gon' be right back. Right by my side, like a monkey on my back. It's been a ride.